different shots like a boss plus some rockin' heavy metal I, I, I just want a bag like an old lady I'm back wood smoking, I don't own papers Pass that 808, that shit a dome shaker Oh, bitch, you know I'm grinding like a pro skater Baby, mama fucking, I'm so quick to hit ignore Buku bitches in my bed, I got scales all on my floor I got money on the line, plus I'm clocking that galore I got bitches kissing bitches, oh, them bitches go explore I'm feeling way up, well, fuck it, I stay up Put your bitch on my Snapchat, while I fuck up, I make up she want a chance with me, cause she know I'm a rapper. I give a dick, but I never get feelings to show Gains, bro. Welcome to the video. Today is a, it's another beautiful day in the state of Texas. If you're new to the channel, welcome. My name is David. If you've been here for a while, then you guys know Julia. Me and Julia have been dating for what, like three, three and a half years now. And we got engaged back in February. Woo -woo. Uh, what was the date we got engaged, babe? It was approximately February 17th to uh, no, 25th. No, it was February 6th. February 6th was the day we got engaged. February, it was February 6th. Man, don't you hate when girls quiz you on those like small details? Like, these are it, things you're supposed to remember. Like these are like moments, like times it's and not, dates. I mean, I'm gonna remember the day we got married, but like the day we got engaged. No, he won't. He won't even remember that date. <laughs> I might. Anyway, the important thing here is that we're together. And now that we've been engaged for the past four or five months, I want to kind of bring you guys behind the curtain here and, and kind of show you, you know, what's changed from being living the girlfriend life to living the engaged life. Is it what we expected? Has anything changed? Do we regret it? Basically, we're going to tell you guys the dirty truth that people have been hiding from you. It might not be that dirty, but we're going to tell you the truth. So we did a quick fact check and we did in fact get engaged on February 6th. He thought I was talking out of my ass. I knew the date. I suspected she might be. Now I quickly kind of want to tell you what my mindset was leading up to the engagement. Because before Julia, my two relationships both lasted like one year each. And I remember at some point I heard a podcast or I was, I think I was reading a book from Kevin O'Leary. He's one of the, the sharks on Shark Tank. He's kind of annoying, I think, actually. But in his book, he mentioned some research that they showed like three years is how long you should be with someone before deciding to marry them because it takes about that long to see if you guys are truly compatible, et cetera, et cetera. So I just accepted that fact. I didn't really question it. And even though I was pretty sure I wanted to be with Julia before that three year mark, you know, once I got to that three year mark is when I really started like planning, okay, how am I gonna do this engagement? How am I just gonna make it dope? Yeah, he left me hanging for so long. I'm like, when is he gonna do it? When is he gonna do do it. I had no idea about this three year mark. Now the other big thing that gave me like, you know, full confidence that, that me and Julia are going to work out long term is that of that three years we'd been dating before getting engaged, half of that, so a year and a half we'd been living together. Yeah, I know how he likes his toothpaste and all that shit. My toothpaste? <laughs> and of that year and a half, the, the, the latter year we actually had moved across country together from Boston to Austin, started a new life together. And like, I still found myself becoming more attracted to her like every single day. Oh, thanks, babe. I feel the same way. But back to the point, how has our life changed from having a girlfriend to being engaged? Well, to be honest with y'all, we got engaged in February. Then in March is when all the quarantine COVID mess started. So like the main change has been that since we've been engaged, we've been quarantined. And I've been stuck with this guy. I mean, Texas quarantine's not that bad, but we haven't been able to travel. We haven't really been able to see too many other people. I mean, aside from that, there really haven't been that many changes in our day-to-day -day life. But I will say that like, as soon as we got engaged, there were some conflicts that have been kind of like bubbling beneath the surface that really came out and immediately led to a little bit of disaster. watch or silver watch which one you want all right the silver watch it is bro y'all know that when i'm getting dressed hey when i'm getting dressed and not going to the gym 
I like to throw a wrist on the watch. I like to throw a watch on the wrist because it just, it adds a little bit of swag to your outfit without putting in any effort. Rolo really likes this watch. And uh, that's why I decided to partner with Vincero Watches to be the sponsor of today's video. The watch I'm rocking right now is their Kairos Mesh watch. And this is my favorite summertime watch because it has this lightweight mesh that's super breathable. It keeps your wrist cool. Plus it comes in a bunch of different awesome colorways that all look dope. And because it's made by Vincero, you already know that this is made from surgical grade stainless steel and the face is made from a scratch resistant sapphire coated glass. Now, normally a watch like this would cost you kind of a lot of money, but because Vincero sells directly to the consumer, you can get a luxury level watch for a super affordable price. And because they're sponsoring today's video, they hooked us up with a little coupon code. If you use that at checkout, you're gonna get an even better deal. So if you wanna take your watch game to the next level, just click that first link in the description to see all my favorite watches on their website. Something that has not changed since we got engaged, and I really was hoping it was gonna change, you skid like a wuss. Like, you don't know how to skid a bicycle. Okay, I just don't want to eat shit, like, on camera. Like, have that's, I like, have, my biggest fear. Have I ever ate shit on camera? I just went into the store and then I bought it. Yeah, you know, got it for the bear low. I guess once or twice I ate shit. Not from skidding, though. Yeah, but I feel like I would. And then it would just be so ugly. Finally, bro, it's breakfast time. Uh, it is definitely not breakfast time. It is... 307 and he's well, here, yeah, yeah. This is unfortunate that it's 307 today, but for me, breakfast time is when I break my fast, right? It's the first meal of the day, and regardless what time it is, I want to have breakfast foods because breakfast foods are the best foods. For example, breakfast tacos. I would skip breakfast all the time if I could. It's such a pet peeve for me that when we go out, even if it's like 11 a.m., and this isn't just for Julia, a lot of people do this, they order lunch instead of breakfast. Well, that's why they came up with brunch. So we got two bacon, egg, and cheese breakfast tacos, delicious. And they also got a steak fajita and a chicken fajita taco to get that protein in. Yep, yeah, mm-hmm. The day has officially started. The vegan diet has not started. The vegan diet may never start, to be honest. So obviously when you're casually dating someone, it's important that you guys are attracted to each other. And you know, and also it should at least be like pleasant to be around them. Like you guys have fun together. Yeah. If that's not the case for someone you're dating, you like need to run. stop seeing them because that's not gonna it's not gonna add value to your life. But I think that you know when it comes to the question of like is this the person that I'm potentially gonna spend the rest of my life with, it's not that simple anymore, right? Because you guys have to have long-term views or you know rough plans for your future that are compatible with each other, or like else like at some point down the line this shit's gonna hit the fan. So for example, while we were dating, we talked about, do we want to have kids? Yes, we both said yes. How many kids do we want to have? I want three. I want two, but we agreed. We can take it one at a time. Where do we want to live long term? I thought I wanted to be near my family, but as soon as we moved to Texas, I was like, ah, I could live here. And I want to be somewhere warm. So, you know, we agreed on that as well. So, you know, for the most part, we believed that we had covered our bases. Then we got engaged and all of a sudden, I think both of us started to think about a lot more specifics about what the future should look like. So the first thing that came up was the timeline. I guess I had it in my head that we'd be engaged for about a year and then we'd have the big wedding and then maybe a year or two after that, we'd be having kids. So I'd still be in my late 20s having children. I think this is like the, the classic like male female debate where the guy kind of wants to put it off, the girl wants it to happen. Obviously, you know, there's biological motivations behind that. Once they get into their, you know, mid 30s or so, it's no longer guaranteed that you're gonna be fertile and stuff. But for me, I was thinking, let's get engaged, you know, wait two or three years, then get married, you know, maybe wait a couple years after that. I don't really wanna think about it too much. We'll have kids at some point. And as you might imagine, that led to, you know, a couple kind of heated discussions. I mean, we talked about it and, you know, we decided to do a little bit of a give and take saying, okay, we're gonna get married in a year, but we'll hold off on having kids. But the funny thing is this COVID hit and now we literally can't get married for another two years. So we're doing this wedding in Spain. So in order to organize everything realistically, it's gonna be 2022. So basically like two and a half years from when we got engaged. Obviously for me, that, that matches my timeline well. But that being said, we agreed. You know, I understand Julia wants to have her first kid by the time she gets to be 30. Now, the other thing that kind of blew up a little bit was when we started discussing more specifics about how we want to raise our children. You know, for example, we started talking about college. 
I went to college, but I believe like in the current economy and the way things are going, like it might not be necessary for our kid to go to school, especially especially if he has kind of like an entrepreneurial nature and he wants to just get out there and get experience instead of sitting through four years of college. And I agree with that, but I just, my view is that I think someone should go to trade school or college and have sort of a career and not just be lazy and decide, ah, I don't want to do any of that. And ultimately, we came to the agreement that if our kid's not going to go to college, like it has to be the right type of kid. Like I said, they have to be motivated. They have to have a plan. Otherwise, like they're going to go to school or at the very least trade school. Young and trapping out the band, though, from the ceiling fan to the damn flow, trying to stack my money up. Cause that's the only way we can go. Tell my mama that I'm OK. See the money coming through the doorway. Got a bad bitch with a lot of money. That's for play. OK. I'll tell y'all one more difference between the brother man and Rolo. Bo has the endurance of like a world class marathon runner. He also has the speed of Usain Bolt, which is pretty crazy. Rolo, he has the uh, the endurance of my grandfather, to be honest. My grandfather's a very good man. He uses a, a walker to get around the house, though. All right, watch this. Every time I throw it, Bo will go get it, and then at the end, Rolo will come over to pretend like he got it. And there comes Rolo. I mean, I guess one thing that getting engaged did change is that we got Rolo and we got the house. Like that wasn't part of the decision-making process, but I don't think realistically I'd be moving into a house if I just had like a normal girlfriend. Or getting a dog together. It's, that's a lot, a commitment. Honestly, Julia convinced me to get the dog because we were so bored during like the most intense part of quarantine and it worked. But yeah, I guess. I probably wouldn't have been interested in getting a dog with a girl who I was not seeing like a long future with. Access IPA, 8.5 out of 10. Welcome to La Cocina de las Morenas. Today, I'm gonna be cooking something up very interesting. Like I've kind of realized as I've eaten a lot of tacos in my day, that like the make or break part of the taco it's the sauce, like the ingredients have to be good, of course, but the sauce is what gives it that, that final flavor. So I've spent a little bit of time, you know, talking to the taco guys in my taco trucks, trying to get them to reveal some secrets about the recipe. And today I'm attempting my first attempt at creating the best hot sauce. I'm not gonna show you all the ingredients, you know, keeping this recipe under wraps for now, but this right here is a habanero pepper. It looks like a little pumpkin. And we're about to eat a lot of them. All right, let's see how bad this bad boy actually is. <coughs> All right, bro, wish me luck. I think I need like a food processor to get it like full saucy, but this is pretty good. I'm kind of afraid to try this right now because that little piece of pepper I ate before, like, 10 minutes ago now, my mouth is still on fire. Wish me luck, bro. I need a little bit more. <coughs> this is the after kick, the after kick effect. So for dinner, we made these like salmon avocado tacos and bro, these look amazing. Got a little bit of that fuego sauce on the side. Mmm, yo. This is really good for an out breakfast taco. I just have to give Julia credit. She's helping me put together the meal plan, like a lot of the different recipes for you know, the Beastly app that we're about to release. And she's come up with some crazy ass recipes. Like lately, I've been having a lot of different meals. These are gonna be on the plan, right? Yep. They are. Yeah, they're all super easy to make, high protein, and they fit your macros. But for real, the app's gonna have basically endless meal ideas that are regularly gonna get updated and added. Doesn't matter if you're bulking or cutting, like they're gonna make it easy to hit your macros. Anyway, bro, we're about to check out this movie that's for rent now, The King of Staten Island with uh, Pete Davidson. I like Pete Davidson, but it's kind of an obnoxious that these like theater from home movies, they're 1999. Like I get that it's a new movie, but 
Like we're not in the movie theater, we're, we're streaming it to our home. I'll throw my score for the movie up here. But real quick before I wrap up, like obviously in this video I kind of gave you guys my inside perspective on getting engaged. But, but I do want to like make the one thing clear. 100% if you're in the early stages of dating a girl or you're single, like when you meet new girls, don't think like is this gonna be my girlfriend or my wife because that's gonna kill your game bro like at first the best way of looking at it at least for me is like you're just trying to have fun with someone new that you're meeting because if you put that pressure on it and you try and like get your expectations up like that's when you get needy and you start simping like i promise you man when you do meet someone that you have that that long-term connection with it will naturally grow into what it's supposed to be if that makes any sense if you made it to the end of this video i appreciate you so much bro give it a thumbs up if you're new to the channel go ahead click subscribe and turn notifications on because i drop two new videos every single week and you don't want to miss them i will talk to all of y'all in the next video stay beastly baby mama bugging i'm so quick to hit ignore buku bitches in my bed i got scales all on my floor i got money on the line plus i'm clocking that galore i got bitches